So when I was a, a young pup, my, my mother would always tell me to keep my mouth shut if I did not have a good, a good thing to say about someone or something someone would show me. And this was especially important if I did not know the person too well. So I mean, okay, I mean, that was a long time ago and um, my mother isn't following me around anymore to shush me when I'm about to drop a lead balloon in the conversation. So nowadays, uh, I get to see a lot of businesses for sale and I see so many entrepreneurs who tend to overvalue their uh, businesses. Now that's to be expected, right? I mean, they've put all the blood, sweat and tears and probably a lot of their personal funding and mum and dad's and cousins and neighbours' personal funding as well into the company. So of course they think it's worth a lot. And uh, the entrepreneurs I work with who have, who have partnerships, and, you know, for some strange reason, so many partnerships get into big trouble eventually. Um, I mean, I'm generalizing here, but a lot of partnerships end up in trouble. Um, I've helped partners um, split the baby, if you, like, if you will. And one of the problems that comes into play is figuring, um, figuring out the added value for the company. Should one party buy out the other? And these companies that I'm talking about are quite young in, in many cases and what they have is, what they tend to have is just a little bit of cash flow. They're not rolling in cash flow, they just have debts also. So a lot of times it is a bit of a head scratch to reach and establish a fair value for their company so that both partners are getting a fair shape or um, to reach a valuation for the entrepreneurs who want to just sell the company outright. And, this, and there is a there is no simple answer to these scenarios. It's always an emotional uh, interplay between the buyer and the seller because each one has an emotional reason, um, an emotional reason that is an oxymoron, if you you know, I guess. But it's the way the business is is worth something different. That's why the business is worth something different. I mean, let's look at some some things that just kind of make make sense. I mean, first of all, the basis for valuing a business has has to be agreed on first, okay, between the partners. And the most standard way, okay, outside of the partnership is to assume that all the owners, partners are dead and the lawyers are chopping up and slicing up the business. So when we people die, the tax authority have to come up with a value for that company for tax purposes. It has to be authoritative because they can't be in court all the time arguing over how much this business is really worth. So the tax system has a formula and basically what they do is they break a business into two um, main valuations. One value is the hard net worth, that's the assets minus the liabilities. Um, but the actual balance sheet, the hard net, net worth of the business, but it's not, it's not the numbers of the balance sheet in appraisal value of the assets minus the, the liabilities. So now you have the assets minus the liabilities or the net worth of the business. They also recognize, that's the tax authority, that there is a goodwill value there in the business. And the goodwill value is the fact that the business can earn profit over and above a reasonable rate of um, return on the net worth of the business. So they come up with a formula which which we use, by the way, in valuing companies, which puts a value on the assets and takes the extra profit that's made by business and comes up with a capitalized value for that goodwill. Then they add the two numbers together and that's the number that they end up with as the valuation of the business. So a business that makes $100,000 uh, in surplus profits over and above or reasonable rate of return on the hard net worth might have a two to three hundred thousand dollar value attributable to that ability to produce that excess profit. So you add that to the five hundred thousand dollars let's say of net worth of the company and you come up with seven hundred and fifty thousand as the value of the company. When when a business has profits it's been around for a while that's that's a baseline formula for coming up with a with a valuation. So what we have is this young business and the partners didn't work out. The business is barely making any profit at all. It's paying people there, bare living. Maybe there's $10,000 worth of hard net worth in the business. Now, one of the partners wants to leave and the other partner wants to carry on the business. So how do you split the baby? Well, here's the way we usually work something like that out. 
See, the hard net worth plus, just say that's the $10,000 number. That's the hard net worth. So we have the buyer come up with either right away or over a short period of time, half of that, which is $5,000, to, to buy out the hard net worth portion of the partner's business. Then we would look at the profit of the business. So let's say the company's total income, you know, and I'm going to make this number up, let's say it's $200,000 for the year. Okay, that's the net cash flow of the business. And of that, the person who's staying, if they, are, if they were to go out into the marketplace and become an employee for somebody, somebody else at the same level of work and responsibility, what will they make? So let's say in the marketplace that they would make 150000 a salary in that position. Now, if we take that 150000 which which they are getting because they're working at that level, and we subtract that from the 200000 that the business is bringing in, then the business is bringing, let's say, 50000 of income. That's over and above what the owner should be getting paid. So from that 50000 we might have the owner of the business, the one who's staying on. They pay a portion of that for the next two or three years to the owner that's leaving until there is an agreed upon exchange that says, okay, you know, I've given you the business, you've got the momentum, there's a little bit of profit here, you're paying me a substantial portion of that profit for the next year, even though I don't work here and I'm the seller. Now, I don't, I don't work here, so now we've taken a portion of that, um, we've paid it to the person who's leaving, then, well, from then on, the owner gets going, and the new owner is, is going on, or the partner is going on with the business. I mean, that's the way of getting around these kind of issues without having to come up with um, a value that no, one, no one's going to agree to. So with strategies like these, it means every time I'm presented with a, a business owner who wants to sell their business, I can still hear the faint words of my mother shushing me, but I do not have an urge to offend any business owners because, you know, who are showing me their business baby because I work according to a formula, you know, and not, not really my opinion.